From the Civil Net offices in the Roscoe-Strach building on Northern Avenue in Yerevan, I'm Paul Chadurjian, and this is the Civil Net Daily News Digest for September the 23rd. Hi, and I'm Maria Titizian. Thanks for tuning in. Here's our overview of the biggest stories our team has been following over the weekend and on Monday. Armenians marked the Third Republic's independence over the weekend. It was 22 years ago when 95% of the Armenian population turned out to vote in favor of secession from the Soviet Union. 99.5% of voters approved establishing an independent republic. President Serge Sarkisian and high-ranking government officials, along with Nagorno-Karabakh President Baku Sahagyan and Catholicos of all Armenians, Karakin II, gathered at the Yeraplu military cemetery in the morning to pay their respects for fallen freedom fighters. Later in the day, the president and top officials celebrated independence with an open-air concert and fireworks in Republic Square. Here at CivilNet, our special live coverage, including documentaries in Armenian and English, and you can watch our five-hour program by following the link on your screen. Hundreds of citizens took to the streets on Independence Day to protest the recent announcement by President Sarkisyan that Armenia would join a customs union led by Russia. Many fear that the move will jeopardize Armenia's sovereignty. The protesters gathered at Liberty Square next to the opera and walked around downtown passing the presidential palace and returned to the opera. They held signs that read free and independent Armenia and say no to the customs union. Police tried to keep the protesters on sidewalks so that they wouldn't disrupt traffic, but weren't able to keep up with the activists, some of whom ran to outpace officers. Our full story is linked on this YouTube page. For the past several weeks, CivilNet has been covering a sit-in by war veterans of the Gharapagh War at Liberty Square. They are demanding increases to their veteran pensions. A retired senior army officer, Colonel Volodya Avedisian, who had been instrumental in organizing the non-stop demonstrations, was arrested on Friday, September 20th, on suspicion of fraud. The investigative service of the Defense Ministry said that Colonel Avedisian embezzled $2,000 from another man with a false promise to have his grandson exempted from compulsory military service. They've said that a criminal investigation is underway. A group of civil society organizations in Armenia are appealing to the United Nations and the Council of Europe as well as more than a dozen international human rights defenders. In a letter they sent last week, they're requesting that those organizations intervene in the high-profile case against civic activist Dikran Arakelian. The activist has been behind bars for the last two years. Arakelian and six others were arrested after an altercation with police on August 9, 2011. He's been in custody since, and his lawyers have repeatedly attempted to secure his release on bail. And to that end, on September 18th, more than 100 organizations and citizens signed a bond guarantee to have him released, but were not successful. They're appealing to the high visibility organizations and individuals to help stop political persecution in Armenia. You can read the full text of their letter in English by linking on this page. The sale of Armenian euro bonds debuted on international markets late last week, securing $700 million of financial resources for the Armenian government. In May of this year, Prime Minister Dikran Sarkisian had announced plans for the external commercial borrowing scheme. The seven-year bonds were sold through HSBC, JP Morgan and Deutsche Bank at a yield of 6%. The Armenian government capitalized on the revived demand for emerging market assets and a yield of 6% also made it attractive to investors. While this is seen as a success by government officials, it is equally important to note that this will increase the country's debt burden. Finance Minister David Sarkisian in a statement said that investors were ready to buy up to $3 billion worth of Armenian bonds. On Friday, dozens of booths lined Northern Avenue as part of a job fair. More than 300 jobs were being offered at the fair, which was one of 11 that happens throughout the year, with funding from the state budget. The job fair was organized by the State Employment Service with support of the United Nations High Commission for Refugees. This job fair was the ninth of the year and the second one in Yerevan. The next one will take place in Yerevan and focus on tech jobs. Before we go, we have some viewer comments we'd like to share. This one is from Huri Maisian, who wrote a note to CivilNet Director Sapi Ghazarian. She says, 
You and your team are bringing independent Armenia with all its complexities, challenges and opportunities into every Armenian household. CivilNet is transcending geographic and language barriers to connect Armenians worldwide with the homeland in a way that was not possible before. Thank you, Huri. And Nora Yakubian from Southern California writes, I love it and continue to add the entertainment aspect as well. Brings lightness and warmth. After all, culture plays a huge role in who we are and where we come from. Let us continue to embrace our traditions. We were also able to witness a vibrant Armenia with political analysts, activists, conferences, foundations, working towards change and offering hope for a better homeland. You covered a wide scope of events and were able to cater to various interests within eight minutes. Thank you, Nora. We also want to hear from you. Our email address is english at civilnet.am. And remember to share our digest with your family and friends and on your favorite social networks. See you tomorrow.